<laughs> Good morning, Archie Comics. Huh? You love them or you hate them, but as a comics fan, well, you can't deny they exist. If you enjoy the adventures of the Riverdale teens and the characters, ubiquity is surely a source of joy to you. Even today, in places where other comics have long since ceased to be sold, Archie and company managed to hang on in the form of these digest-sized volumes that get slotted between the Sudoku books and the Farmer's Almanac. And if you don't like Archie, well, brother, you've got a hard road to hoe. You see, millions of comics bearing the Ginger One's likeness have appeared since his birth in 1941. In this episode, we're going to take a look at just a few. Hey, I'm no expert here. What I don't know can and does fill the internet. That said, I thought that it would be a nice change of pace to walk through some notable Archie publications of the past, as well as sharing some of my favorites. So, warm up the jalopy, grab your allowance, and join me as we head down to Pop's Malt Shop for an old guys who like old comics guide to Archie Comics. Breakfast! Our story begins in Pelham, New York, and the establishment of MLJ magazines. After an initial focus on superheroes, publisher John Goldwater decided to expand into the humor genre. Inspired by the popular Andy Hardy films of the time, Goldwater set upon the idea of a comic following the adventures of a normal American teenager and his small-town pals. Teaming with artist Bob Montana, the pair crafted their new character. Archibald Archie Andrews first appeared in Pep Comics No. 22. Initially known as Chick to his friends, Archie was your typical teener of the time, into sports, cars, and, most importantly, girls. Almost from the jump, Archie found himself in a love triangle situation, childhood friend Betty Cooper now competing for Archie's affection with the rich and beautiful Veronica Lodge, along with his best pal Jughead and nemesis Reggie Mantle, Archie began what would be a publishing run that remains unbroken to this day. The character proved popular enough to graduate from the pages of Pep into his own title. Archie No. 1 appeared in December of 1942, the first of a head-spinning series of spin-off specials and ancillary titles. In fact, there are so many different Archie comics that we couldn't possibly show them here, but we will hit upon some of the high notes. Here's my oldest Archie. And this is an annual from 1953. This features cover art and interiors from Bob Montana. And uh, really happy to have this one in the collection. It's a big 116-page book. And then after that, what do we have here? Um, this is issue number 80, Archie, now referred to as the Mirth of a Nation. And uh, I think this is Harry Lucy. I can't quite be sure because, uh, you know, as big as the Internet is, sometimes it doesn't have all the information you want. Uh, what I would say is that from this point out, well, I'm just going to show you the comic book. Pertinent information when it's available will be down at the bottom of the screen. So what next? All right. I'm pretty sure this is uh, Harry Lucy right here. It's a wonderful jalopy cover. This is uh, Archie's car. This is known as Old Betsy. 
Archie's constantly trying to come up with some change to fill the tank. All right, at this point, uh, I'm pretty sure this is Dan DiCarlo. And uh, here we have a computer. You know, from what I understand, one day they're going to be small enough to fit in the biggest room in your house. So that's pretty exciting for sure. Then after that, okay, here's uh, Archie Giant. This is the 14th issue, and uh, this is an absolute knockout. Really, really love this cover for sure at this point. It's quite the iconic image. Here, Archie, in the middle of that love triangle. And then uh, I added this one last year. Haven't actually read it yet. I'm waiting for, you guessed it, Halloween. It's Archie's Christmas Stocking. Uh, not only was there the Archie title, but uh, they just spun Archie off into endless variations of his own book. Here we have Archie's Christmas Lovin' picking up the pace a little bit. There's a real nice uh, Christmas tree cover. That tree doesn't look too healthy. Sheesh. Where'd they find that? In the dump? Oscar wants his tree back. And uh, here we have uh, Archie's Joke Book. And, uh... <laughs> That's Betty. What a stinker, huh? And, uh, okay. I actually covered this one in a very early comics for breakfast. Uh, this is Aspire Publications, Archie uh, Co-Pub. And, uh, here we have Archie's One Way. And, uh... This is uh, a very interesting book. If you're uh, interested in uh, hearing more about it, follow the link at the bottom of the screen below. I could devote an entire segment to it, and I would, but we've got Archie's Pals and Gals to look at, and this is number 14. Like I said, we have uh, Archie and his pals and gals. There's Betty getting the best of them there. Old Waffle Head is what they call him. Some folks call them that. Other folks, less charitable. Then what do we have here? More pals and gals. I like this. This is a wonderful beach cover. And uh, we also get uh, a little Beatles action as well. That's a lot of fun. I'm not sure if those are mop heads or uh, they've just dumped some Chef Boyardee on their noggins. But it's a great look nonetheless. Uh, Archie... You know, that was the power of this character, is they were able to just keep spinning him off and keep spinning him off. Here, Archie and me, that's right. It's Archie and Mr. Weatherby stories. You know, if, if you can't get enough of those 15 other Archie titles, maybe Archie and Mr. Weatherby will uh, be that reach that magical itch for you. But uh, here's a great cover. The teens are cutting it up. It's classical music week, and uh, apparently... <laughs> They're uh, doing the frug to it. So if you can't frug to Beethoven, you ain't listening to it right. And uh, here's another Spire, Kitty's Christian Comics. It's Barney Bear. And uh, this is by Al Hartley, longtime uh, Archie creator. Some interesting titles on the back as well. We have Barney Bear, we have Crossfire, and Hansi, the girl who loved the swastika. Collect them all, folks. Then uh, Betty and me. That's right. We finally moved past the Archies and... Uh, oh, wait. It's actually Archie and Betty. Archie is me, apparently. Not you. That would be Betty and you. And uh, I don't know how many people are going to want to read that comic. I'd give it a chance. Twelve cents. But, uh, yeah, here we have a... Ski Mobile cover. I guess that was a thing at the time. Poor old Betty. Getting roped into dragging these two knuckleheads along. And, uh, all right, Betty and Veronica. The girls uh, graduating to their own title, even though Archie, his name is up there because uh, they know who puts the pancakes on the table. But uh, this is the first appearance of Betty as Super Teen. And uh, this is a wonderful issue. Very, very cool. We actually talked about this one on Comics for Breakfast as well. Next up, we have Betty and Veronica, and uh, oh, an ever-popular slumber party cover. Here the girls are, having a good old time, Betty Veronica. There's, uh, oh, there's Ronnie's mom. You don't see her all that often. And, uh, oh, there's Midge. She's a caution, let me tell you, folks. People are always saying, Betty or Veronica, 
Me, I'm a midge guy. Just don't tell Big Moose. And uh, speaking of Betty and Veronica, you know, here's a real nice, uh, more modern cover. Here the girls are tempting old Arch. What the hell is he wearing? Yeesh. The 80s were a wild time, folks. That's right. And uh, here we have a Betty and Veronica summer fun. That's real nice. There the gals are in their sporting gear. Oh, there's, there's Midge. Hi, Midge. <laughs> if this cover crumbles anymore, Midge will disappear. So enjoy her while she lasts. And uh, oh, here's a wonderful... Betty and Veronica, and uh, if that doesn't say summer fun to you, well, then you better get Brian Wilson on the phone, because I, I surely as hell can't help you. That is right. And then, uh, all right, so it wasn't all about the Archie. Uh, Archie uh, Comics not only published Archie, but they published some uh, humor titles that uh, weren't specifically about Archie and the gang. This one is Bats, and this is just sort of an anthology. It's kind of a Mad Magazine-esque uh, sort of pre-plop, if you will, kind of thing. It's all right. Next up, Everything's Archie. That's right. All you love, your wife, your children, Archie, your dog. Your cat. Also, Archie. There's no escape. Don't even try, folks. And uh, it's a nice popular beach cover. Absolutely. And what do we have here? Oh, speaking of beach covers, it's Josie. That's right. Based on artist Dan DiCarlo's wife. Here's Josie in uh, her pre-pussycat days. Getting the attention of all the fellows on the beach. And why not? I've always been a sucker for a redhead. Oh, and uh, here's one of my top ten uh, Archie publications. Absolutely one of my personal favorites. Josie and the Pussycats. This is number 72. It's a giant. It would have to be to contain Vengeance from the Crypt. And uh, in this issue, Josie is possessed. That's right, an ancient evil uh, manifests and uh, possesses our favorite pussycat, and, well, she goes on a rampage. You just have to see it to believe it, folks. I actually did a Comics for Breakfast on it. Uh, you can find it at the link below, absolutely. If you want to check that out, I'll wait. Are we good? All right. Next up. Okay, it wasn't just uh, Archie and the gals who had uh, comics. Jughead got his own title as well. Here's Jughead watching a little TV outside. That's right. I believe this is by Sam Schwartz, longtime Archie artist. Then we have, uh, oh, it's the world of Jughead. When the uh, monthly uh, comic just isn't enough for you and uh, you need a whole world's worth of Jughead. Absolutely. How could you go wrong? We have some Jughead's jokes. You know, Archie, they just cranked him out, baby. And now, uh, oh. <laughs> now right here, this, uh, for sure, for the longest time, I thought this was an urban legend until I got a copy of it myself. Why, it's Jughead's Eat Out, comic book magazine. And, uh, boy, the fellas sure look miffed, but, you know, the gals, they love his home cooking. And then, oh, uh, here's another one of those slumber party covers. And, uh, whoa, see? That's what I said about M Midge. Man, alive. Everyone else here dressed fairly reasonably. Midge apparently thinks she's a Playboy ma Mansion. <laughs> My word. No wonder Big Moose is so jealous, huh? And uh, then we have Life with Archie. This is sort of an off-the-wall title because uh, these had a tendency to go out of the uh, bounds of the regular, you know, st stories, regular Archie universe here. Uh, they're encountering a giant. It's not just a cover gag. Apparently there really isn't giant in this issue. And uh, I picked this one up absolutely because if there's something I love just as much as Archie, well, it would have to be monsters. And uh, here the Archies are meeting the creeps. And, uh, Archie as an agent of uh, Pop. He's the man from Riverdale. And uh, this cover, well, what can you say? <laughs> 
<laughs> Here the ginger oaf is uh, be smitten by kisses from Ronnie, and then uh, down below, well, he's he's losing it because he's never seen a girl's midriff before, apparently. So, you know, watch for that one. Following up on the occult theme of that previous Josie issue, we have uh, Life with Archie, and the teens encounter some creepy fiends. And then we have a little Archie. The Adventures of Little Archie, that's right, here he is as a superhero. I know that uh, many of you are really big on these Little Archies. Uh, I gotta say, hasn't clicked for me yet, you know. Uh, as a young person, I didn't much like Archie at all, but uh, having grown up, I've uh, come to appreciate the humor of those books, absolutely love the artwork, but uh, somehow still haven't really figured out the appeal of Little Archie, but uh, hey... I figured I had to show at least one to represent it. Then we have Archie's Madhouse. Another, ooh, it's a creepy issue, folks. That's right. And here's Jughead. He's about to get monstered in the worst way possible. We've got uh, a werewolf, a vampire, a gorilla, a snake with legs, and, of course, a vulture. That is, oh, and a lovely witch opening the door for him. It's a great cover. And uh, this is a 10 center as well, so that's a nice old one. And then uh, Madhouse, they kept that one going for a while, but they would uh, periodically tweak it. Here it is at this stage. It's Archie Presents the Madhouse Mad Freakout. And uh, the Madhouse Mads at this stage were a band. Um, I was going to say, it looked like they had a... <laughs> A gorilla in the band, but that's just a guy in a fringe jacket. But, uh, you know, sort of a monkeys-esque, uh, Archies-esque kind of band. And uh, I don't know how popular this thing was, but apparently we know where Frank Zappa gets all his ideas from. Next up... Here is my earliest issue of Pep. I know that uh, some folks, they look down their nose at coverless comics, but uh, I was happy to add this book to my collection for what I paid for it. So, what is it? 81, from what it says. And uh, there's Archie and Reggie competing for Ronnie's affections, as they usually do. What a couple of jokers, huh? Then uh, here's my second oldest Pep. This is issue number 120, and uh, here is Archie, and a uh, very young-looking moose. Very ill-fitting pants <laughs> right there. And uh, this one not only features uh, the gang, but we have uh, Katie Keene, Wilbur, Lil Jinx, and Pat the Brat. Who exactly? And then uh, what do we have here? Oh, this is... <laughs> Pretty weird looking, huh? Comics. Good shoes for the entire family. Yes, those two things do go together. What is this? It's a coverless comic. Yes, they're supposed to be destroyed, but apparently the uh, good folks at uh, Ben Shoe Store in Aliquippa, PA, thought otherwise. Ben, uh, some men are on their way. Next up, we have uh, my personal... Favorite pep cover, and uh, this is Harry Lucy Dynamite. That's right. Uh, this was actually my big gateway into collecting Archie. Up to that point, I would just uh, grab them sporadically when I saw them, but uh, when I saw this cover, it absolutely knocked me out. Uh, the amount of emotion conveyed here in this single image, it uh, knocks my socks off, if you will. <laughs> You can't write this stuff, folks. Uh, then, speaking of Archie's rival, Reggie, yeah, he even had his own comic as well. And everyone seems to be getting along here. Well, except for Betty, I guess. A little jacked off. She always is. And then we have uh, another issue of uh, Archie's rival. And uh, here Reggie is in the hospital bed. Yep. Dot says, I recovered quickly because I have such rich young blood. Jughead says, too bad you have to keep it in such a poor old container. Classic stuff. And then we have uh, Reggie and me. No, not Reggie and I. Reggie and 
well, presumably Reggie, considering he's uh, staring in the mirror and all. And, uh, that's a typically uh, kooky beach cover. I told you she was trouble. And then uh, it wasn't just all about the Archie and the gang. That's right, Sabrina the Teenage Witch made her debut at... Uh, when did she make her debut, Larry? You dropped it in on the bottom of the screen. Larry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't have uh, any of those really early issues because they are super desirable, uh, not only to comics collectors, but uh, people who like the show as well. And uh, But I do have this one. It's uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch Giant, number 15. And uh, here we see her uh, using her powers in some uh, well, fairly typical ways, I guess. I hope those fellows like mustard. Gosh, I know I do. And then uh, here's uh, the sort of thing that I'm a sucker for. Not only a Sabrina cover, but uh, it's got some spooky monsters at the movies, no less. So, uh, yeah, that one ticks most of the boxes. And then uh, here we have a very briefly touch upon an uh, Archie superhero. Uh, at one point in time, they did a superhero style adaptation of The Shadow. It actually looks quite a bit like a Steve Rogers' is Nomad, but uh, not nearly as interesting, I'm afraid. But uh, I don't know. Not bad artwork, for sure. I read it. I uh, wasn't blown away by it, but uh, hey, maybe I owe it another consideration for sure. And then uh, here's the shadow, oh, looking a little more classic, you know, covering his big old nose up. So uh, who knows? Maybe it improved. Or maybe I just have them out of order. That's probably more likely. And then what do we have here? It's uh, Archie Triple Giant Comics. Now, apparently these were uh, sold on airplanes and in uh, airports and things like that for uh, kids to stay occupied. You got 160 pages in full color. And uh, from what I understand, these are basically just rebound issues of uh, Archie and the gang. But uh, there's some real... Nice stuff, absolutely. Reprints, for sure. That looks like Harry Lucy artwork to me. So I was happy to add this to my collection. Five bucks. What a deal, huh? And then we're going to wrap things up with, uh, well, someone who isn't Archie or Jughead, Veronica, Sabrina even. It's uh, Wilbur. Who? That's right. Uh, Wilbur was uh, sort of a, I guess he's sort of a Dobie Gillis esque uh, character here. You know, he was uh, you know very much like an Archie knockoff. At the same time, we sort of have your uh, Veronica and Betty clones, but uh, this was illustrated by Dan DiCarlo and. Uh, you know, up to this point, it had been a real uh, knockoff, but the book really began to find its own identity with uh, issue number 80, and apparently they canceled it shortly after that. Ain't that just the way it goes, huh? In the end, Archie's pretty much done it all. He's been a sports hero, a pop star, a secret agent, and a superhero. He's conquered radio, print, and the small screen more than once, in the process encountering politicians, punk bands, punishers, and predators. Hell, he's even died. Didn't even slow him down. Not bad for a teenager, huh? Thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider purchasing a t-shirt, or a mug, or one of the other fine items that you can only find at the Old Guys Who Like Old Comics swag shop. Every dime goes getting towards old Betsy running in time for my date with Midge. Just, uh, don't tell Big Moose. I'm your host, Jason Mink, and I hope to see you next Sunday at breakfast!